Hello everyone and welcome to Gepard Motors channel about cars and vehicles and everything with an engine or motor. Toyota Camry Hybrid. I own this particular car for two years. It is my daily driver and I have about 30,000 miles on it. It's LE model, the most simple and cheapest Toyota Camry on the market. I will tell you why we chose this Camry over Toyota Corolla Hybrid, what I really don't like in this car, and I will show you a few technical and design flaws it has. First of all, which cars were in the list? We were looking for a daily driver car with following criteria – the cheapest, the most reliable, and the most economic in the matter of fuel because we travel a lot. Small note here, I know it might be not the cheapest vehicle or cheapest Toyota, I don't really know the market prices, but we wanted the cheapest automobile we could find, which we would still like from outside and inside, so we wanted to go as low as possible, but not feeling bad that we bought something we didn't really like. I did some research and these autos ended up in my list. Kia K5, Toyota Corolla Hybrid and Toyota Camry Hybrid. I've heard a lot of good reviews about Kia. It's really good looking car, but honestly, I've never had any Kias before and I was a little bit afraid to try it as an owner. Plus, Toyota made me a good offer at that moment. We hate to shop for cars, because dealerships usually have pretty aggressive tactics and push really hard on you with sales, but it is a whole different story. At that moment, we had been already referred to a really great salesperson in Toyota and we wanted to close the deal as soon as possible. We were swinging only between Toyota Corolla and Toyota Camry at that moment. Corolla hatchback is also a really good looking car, but just too small for me. Toyota Avalon is a very good car, but more expensive. I might make a review about it soon too. So we did a few test drives and these are the main reasons why we've purchased Camry, not Corolla. First, I'm 6.2 tall and I had not enough space for my legs in driver's seat. My right knee was leaning against the center console and after some time it started to hurt. The same thing with my left knee, but it was leaning against the door. I felt Camry is wider and my knees were not leaning against anything. Just to let you know, one of my cars is 1998 Chevrolet Tahoe two doors four wheel drive, so I'm pretty used to a king sized throne and a lot of space around me. Second, I could easily get in and get out of the back seat of Camry. There is enough space for my legs between front and rear seat, and it was pretty comfortable for me to sit there. But Corolla has much less space in the back, smaller door frame, and I realized it just didn't work for me. Interior is much nicer and looks well, we can say richer in Camry, it just feels better. My wife said, I want this one, I want this one, when she got inside of Camry after the Corolla. Materials, seats, design, dashboard, screen, etc, everything feels and looks better. The whole car is a little bit smaller than Camry. When we drove Camry, we felt it was more responsive on acceleration pedal and overall felt much more comfortable. The lumbar support and front seat in Camry was the last and the main reasons we made our decision in favor of it. I have a bad back and it is very important for me to have a comfortable seat. Driver's seat has multiple adjustments and it's really nice. As for fuel efficiency, 2020 Toyota Camry Hybrid runs 50 miles per gallon or burns 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers and price was around $30,000 for it. It fit our budget and we really liked the design of the car and the interior, so as we wanted, it was a golden middle for us. Just a small tip, buy rubber deep dish-like floor mats for the salon and the trunk. You will thank me later. They are super convenient and you never need to think if you spill anything and they are easy to wash. Now let's talk about technical and design flaws of Toyota Camry Hybrid and what I, let's say, really don't like in this car. Quality of body assembly and quality of interior plastic parts is horrible. The rubber seal around the door frame on the driver's side lets the water in. Here you can see the watermarks along the seal. 
Thank God it doesn't leak when it's raining. Well, it doesn't rain a lot in California, just a few times a year, but it leaks every time I wash our Camry. I go only to automatic contactless car wash and it's somewhat high pressure, but I also take my 24 years old Chevy Taco truck to the same car wash and have no any issues at all. Plus, I hear wind noise coming from this spot when I drive it. Now about the car body and exterior. I don't know if it's a poor quality of parts or poor assembly, but I don't like hood gaps and trunk lid gaps. They are not even. The trunk lid on the left side raised and has a bigger gap than on the right side. I personally see it and I don't like it. Plus trunk lid hit bumper every time I close it. It hits me in my head. There is a pocket on the ceiling for the sunglasses. If I forget to close it and get into the car, I hit the corner of the pocket with my head every time. And I must tell you, it's very painful, because the edge of the thing is pretty sharp. Dear Toyota engineer or interior designer or whoever created this thing, you are in my mind. Always. Headrest. It's super uncomfortable. It gave me neck pain all the time. It literally pushes your head forward and makes you hunching your back. And it is not adjustable like in BMW 7 Series I had before, for example. So I had to bend that headrest back a little bit and I have it like this for two years now and I have no any issues. You can see the headrest angle difference here. I did not make any changes to the passenger seat headrest. I do not understand why they made it in this super uncomfortable way. This armrest in front makes this crazy and pleasant sound each time I lean on it. I've tried to find where it's coming from, but seems like it's top pad and I can't do anything with it. Well, I don't know how to fix it. Is it cheaply made plastic parts here or bad assembly? I don't know, but they wobble and rattle and make these annoying sounds. Weird sound comes from the ceiling also, and I could not find the exact place it's coming from. Well, you might wonder why I won't ask Toyota to fix everything I complain here about because it's still under warranty, right? Well, first of all, as usual, when you come to the service shop, some issues are suddenly gone. Second, I didn't want to spend days without a car. I just simply have no time for this at all. And I need this car every single day. So I admit it was my choice. When I just got this Camry, the steering wheel had sharp pieces of plastic sticking out along the seam. I think it is a result of molding process at the factory. I had to cut it off with sharp cutter, because it was really unpleasant to touch it. Definitely poor manufacturing. Actually, I can still feel this seam here at the corners. Here are two buttons for the night salon lights in front. First floor, they do not have background light, so when it's dark, you have to keep searching for them all over the ceiling with your hand. And they are pretty small. Each button turns light only for one seat, the drivers or the passengers. So if you want more light, you need to push them both. 
There is also a separate salon light on the ceiling in the back, so if you need even more light, you have to reach it out there to turn it on, and even with my long hands, it's not convenient, and this move hurts my shoulder every time. Lights in front are white LED, but in the back it's old school yellow really weak light. The following moments I want to tell you about are not really flaws, but still some things I really do not like in this car. Technical moments. When we just got this Camry Hybrid, we had an option to see tires pressure, but only through Toyota mobile app. We could not see it on the dash, and more than that, when I cancelled our Toyota Safety Connect subscription, they also turned off tire pressure monitoring option in the app. So if you want to see your tire's pressure information, you have to pay Toyota monthly fee for this. Toyota Safety Connect option also engages your SOS button installed in the ceiling, so you could let Toyota know if you have an emergency. Very often I can't lock my car. When I leave car, I push lock button on my remote control to lock it, but it doesn't lock and beeps a few times, letting me know something is wrong. Dash says something, I don't remember honestly what exactly, so I need to push start-stop engine button a few times to fix it. Well, sure, maybe I do something wrong and there is a way to avoid it, but shouldn't it be as simple as you put your car in park, push stop engine button, leave your car, close the door and lock it? Why there are some more actions needed? Why I have to remember to turn something off? Why not to keep it simple? I find it frustrating. This camera has collision avoidance or brake assist option, and when it thinks you're too close to the car in front and it thinks your speed is too high, it first warns you to brake and very often it also starts to brake for you. And this is a problem because when I use brakes I do it smoothly, but Toyota Camry does it in a harsh way even when there is no real need in it at all and our staff just flies around the salon after such emergency braking assistance. It really scared us a few times because I was not expecting my car to do anything like this and I can't get used to it because sometimes Toyota does it and sometimes not. It's really frustrating too. You can turn this option off through the dashboard menu, but as soon as you restart your car, it comes back automatically. Very often when I run over metal plates on the road or small potholes or just uneven pavement or painted road lines, it triggers ABS or stabilization system, and again for no probable cause, and it scares us every time it turns on. It's a very unpleasant experience. It makes really loud sound when you put it in park. Seems like it's coming from the hybrid electric system. It's fine during the day, but when I come home late night, it sounds really loud, and I think at least a few houses around can hear that. I understand that it might just how hybrid system works, but still keep it in mind. Some people don't like loud cars. Front suspension makes some clunking sounds when you're running slow like 5 miles an hour or backing up and you push brakes. Seems like it's just how electric brakes or hybrid system works, but first months it made me anxious because I thought something was wrong with our car. Toyota checked it multiple times and didn't find any issues. Regular car battery is not under the hood as usual, but located in the trunk. Actually, I find it more convenient to have it in the back in case you need to jump up any other car. But because the battery is under the floor and under the mat, it is really hard to reach it. And I have to take a lot of stuff out of the car and put it just on the ground. It would be great to have additional battery connectors somewhere above the floor in the trunk for easy access. The same way many manufacturers make it now under the hood. Floor lining is super cheap, I mean super 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 cheap. You see it and you feel it, just like a carpet from 99 cent store. Not really good tires installed from the factory and in 30,000 miles they got bald. On our Toyota camera we had Firestone FT140 tires and when I googled it I found out that they have just 3 stars rating. I personally feel they have bad traction on dry road and even worse on wet. As for the noise, they are not so bad, but could be better. I personally usually run on a set of tires for about 45-60 thousand miles, but these lasted 30% less. So after just two years, we need to spend about six, seven hundred dollars for a set of brand new tires. The same thing with the windshield wiper blades. They are cheap. They stopped cleaning well just in one year. 
not a big deal, but be ready to spend some money on it too. Camry Hybrid is pretty noisy inside when you drive it. I feel it has not enough sound deadening. Just my personal feeling. Gurgling noise coming from right front passenger side from under the dashboard. I suppose it's air conditioner or heater, but again, it's not critical, but it's annoying. And never any of my cars did that. Well, just sometimes and just for a few seconds. My Camry does this almost non-stop when AC is on. Interior plastic is really poor quality and scratches really easily. Believe me, I do not throw keys on it or nothing else what could damage it. I don't have long nails on my fingers, but still it's scratched all over. I use only soft cloth to wipe dust off and dirt or just a paintbrush. The plastic ventilation grill cracked just in a few weeks. Dashboard is made of somewhat kind of a matte black rubber and it's almost impossible to clean it or to wipe it because it is not slippery at all like plastic or leather. Any cloth just stops, like sticks to it and you can't move it around. Plus, it's really hard to clean any stains from it. You can't pull out the whole cup holder for cleaning, only the rubber liner at the bottom. But it doesn't make sense to me, because while you'll be taking that liner out, all dirt or spilled drink will fall right back into the cup holder. Interior looks good, no complaints here, but it has so many gaps, like in the steering wheel, that cleaning it becomes a very hard task. Try to get all the dirt out from there, oh my god. Glossy dashboard plastic reflects bright sunlight right into your eyes in a sunny day and always looks dirty because of all the fingerprints around. Seats look good, but they become really dirty really quickly. They made out of very simple hard to clean cloth, I would recommend to buy seat covers. Floor mats lost their shape just in one year and look not very Toyota quality now. Paint job is so-so, I found some paint leaks and somewhat kind of uneven layer under the paint. Not terrible, but looks not clean. Front bumper is too low even for American good roads. When I leave any parking lot, even I try to be super careful to go slow, driving at an angle to the deep, I still scrub the pavement or the concrete top blocks of the parking lots with my front bumper. It all scratched and damaged because of this, and nothing I can do about it. I've tried different driving techniques, but still hitting something all the time. When window glass is down, you can see the edge of it, and it doesn't look nice. I know, I know, you will curse me now for me being too picky, but again, none of the cars I've ever drove had this. All of them had nice and clean and smooth edge. But in Toyota Camry, it looks like it was not finished well. The glove box is not convenient to use. Everything just rolls out and falls down right onto the floor. Camry trunk is good size, good volume, but you still can't put really big bags of boxes there because the shape and the size of the trunk frame is too narrow. I usually drive in normal mode, but sport mode is really great. Steering wheel becomes stiffer and it runs like a champion. Honestly, after BMW 740 twin turbo, I did not feel any difference in accelerating at all. You may not believe me, but I feel this way. Camry Hybrid has a gasoline engine and an electric motor, so when you push acceleration pedal all the way into the floor, electric motor kicks in and adds power to the main engine, so it works somewhat like a turbocharger or supercharger. 
Steering is pretty good and responsive even on 16 inch wheels and 205 wide and 65 tall tires. Overall, we really like the design inside and outside. It's pretty comfortable for short and long trips. A few times I drove it for 2000 miles in 3 days and have nothing to complain about. I like to put my left elbow on the door and it feels comfortable to sit like this. For example, in Mazda CX-5 the door cover sits much higher and it was uncomfortable. I was sitting like this. I really wish Camry would have seats memory option, maybe other Camry trims have it, I don't know. It's pretty reliable, in 30,000 miles nothing broke and I hope it'll be this way. Just that plastic ventilation wheel broke I mentioned before. Uh, Toyota gave us 3 years or 36,000 miles basic warranty and 5 years or 60 miles powertrain warranty. If you ask me, would I purchase Toyota Camry Hybrid again? And I will tell you probably yes, because overall it's really affordable and reliable and pretty comfortable, good looking everyday driver car. I know some of my complaints are not a big deal, you'll say, but all this shows overall quality of how it was manufactured. Don't get me wrong, I still like this car, but it's not Toyota I knew and I loved for the last 30 years. No feeling of good. Toyota quality anymore. Thank you for watching and do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have. Bye.